this dinner being made, or is it? I'm not sure. We should check the status. Let's of not dinner. start recording until until we know the status of food. Well, until after we'll eat and then do it. Yes. That way we're not interrupted. We, yes. Food's more important. I I concur. Welcome. You are entering into a strange dimension. A dimension where narratives from across space and time come together. Narratives that could have, might have, or should have been all exist here in one space. This is Cinemaster's Ultimate Timeline. Hello and welcome to Cinemaster's Ultimate Timeline. This is the show where we watch movies, and then we come up with an alternative version of how that movie could have been even better. I am Nate Draper, and this is my good friend, Andrew Dion. Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, yeah, so today we watched The Temple of Doom. Temple of Doom. Uh, which, uh, I guess we'll start with... Thoughts. Thoughts. Oh, I'll start, okay. Yeah, you go ahead. Um, I really like Indiana Jones, like the series. Like, just the whole idea of, of these old school, like almost like Penny Dreadful, uh, you know, romantic going into the jungle to find the lost thing and, you know, with pretty girls and stuff like that. And I don't know, I really like that. Like, I really like the uh, Nathan Drake series, like on Xbox, like, and, and, and just how cinematic they are. But I do not like this movie. I think this movie is the worst, including Crystal Skull. This is the worst Indiana Jones movie. You would you would put it below Crystal Skull. Yeah, I would say okay. I would say three is my favorite. So okay, uh, Crusade, then Ark, uh -huh. then Crystal Skull, then Temple of Doom. Oh, Temple of Doom is awful, and I'll tell you why. For me, it feels like there's no real plot. The only thing that's happening is just set piece to set piece. It's like it's like here's one big set piece that's like this big fight scene and then the next set piece crash plane crashing and then the next set piece is coming down the hill and then finally we're what i think we're 15 minutes into the film at that point maybe 20 and we've just got to the village in india oh yeah and all we've we haven't had any plot it's just been it's action. How, how do we get to this yeah how do we in india like it's almost like the director is like hmm how do we get... Has anyone seen the plot? <laughs> Spielberg's just like, or, do you know where the plot is? Oh, we crash-landed right into the plot. Wow, That's what it feels convenient. like. So the reason I think about this is because there's this idea of, of something called passive heroism, or passive heroism, passive heroism, which is um, this idea that instead of having things... Or instead of moving through a narrative and like making things happen, the narrative moves around you and you're just in it. Like, you, you don't do anything. And yeah, so yeah. that's what I feel like was happening. Like, they just sort of wind up in the plot, and then they move through it from, like, things are happening to them. Oh, they find the the cult of Thuggy in... Of Thuggy. Of Thuggy in, in underneath the temple. And it's just like... It, it, it all, it's all like a series of coincidences that all happen to Indy. It's like, you're not smart or clever. You're just lucky. Yeah. yeah. That's why I don't like this movie. Also, because... And I read a really cool article that was that explained really, really clearly what I meant. It was um, when you start introducing real magic, Indiana Jones loses its um, what makes it great. It belongs in the in between, right? In a in a world where magic could exist and clearly does, such with the Ark, but we never dive deep into it. Like the whole like sleep of Kalisa or whatever, where they like get control, mind controlled and hypnotized or the fact that he oh, can rip a yeah. dude's heart out without them dying. And then it just sort of heals. melts yeah. back Indiana over, Jones yeah. belongs in a world where it is not like their, their magic doesn't exist for the regular day, but there's just a little bit, just enough mm -hmm. to keep it interesting. That's yeah. why like when they talk about aliens, it's like, oh, you jumped the shark. Like it's like, it, you always need to be like, Instead of instead of Crystal Skull, I know we're not doing Crystal Skull as an episode, but we will. But instead of doing Crystal Skull as like, oh, aliens, it should be we get to the end of the movie and it's like, well, how did this happen? Aliens maybe could be, but never definitively. Right. Yeah. It's sort of like um, the magic is in a box and you can just take the lid off and look inside. You can you can peek, you can but peek. you can't open it. Yeah, and then yeah. there's, I mean, with Raiders, it was, there's a consequence for looking in. Right, and, and same with, same with um, the, the chalice, like the Holy Grail, mm. there's a consequence for picking poorly. Right, exactly. Right? So, or you can't, in, if you 
you do, in the case of immortality, you have to stay there. You can't take it with you. Right. So there's a certain, yeah, there's, there's this unstated thing where it's there's this supernatural element that's not for human meddling. Or, kind of or even just like from, from a, yeah, from a narrative perspective, it's like there's a supernatural element in the world, like, but it's never, you can't explain it. This isn't fantasy. Right. Right? It is sort of fiction with a bit of the paranormal in there. Mm. And and you can see the bare bones of it in Temple of Doom, but it's not quite there. And I think I fixed that. Okay. I think I fixed that. But your thoughts. Okay, so my thoughts, um, I think it is a, for the most part, actually a well-directed film with little to no story is essentially how I would sum it up. Because I actually think in the beginning, if you look at that intro sequence, I do think Steven Spielberg is actually very good at leading your eye. Which is, it, that's one thing that I, I think I may have actually enjoyed the movie more with the sound off. Um, <laughs> what you can t- that's always a great, like yeah. almost as if it was a music video. Yeah. It's just one long extended music video for Anything Goes. Yeah, and you can put on whatever you want while you're watching Well, I was it. just thinking, like, what if you just put Anything Goes, like the, the song from the beginning? That oh, Willie sings, like Anything Goes. Oh. Just, just have it on loop, on repeat. <laughs> right. Actually, on that, there was... Um, a really interesting experiment done a few years ago. Steven Soderbergh, um, famous director, actually took Raiders of the Lost Ark and uploaded it and put it in black and white and cut all the sound out. And the idea was you would actually watch Raiders of the Lost Ark to study the shot composition. Mm, so, yeah. yeah. So I actually think that would have worked better with Temple of Doom. You would have wound up with better shot composition because instead of having like a crappy plot, you just have sort of action sequence by action sequence all shot really well. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, like in terms of how y- your eye is led through the frame, it's a well done film. Not quite to the same precision as Raiders of the Lost Ark, but I still think technically, I think it's well done. I mean, it's it, you have some pretty skilled people working. I mean, it's Steven Spielberg, and by this point, he's directed. He know, yeah, he knows what he's a doing. Lot of, yeah. Great movies. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, he definitely he's, knows this what he's is, doing. I mean, Jaws was amazing, and then everything leading up. Star Wars was uh, before this. Yeah, but he so. didn't do Star Wars. Oh, right. That's Well, he was... Was he not a part no. of Star Wars? Uh, no, he, was, oh, he was just kind of loosely associated with it because he's friends with George, with George Lucas. Lucas. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. But, yeah, the story I heard was that they actually met because Jaws and Star Wars came out around the same time. Yeah, about and, three years apart. Um... I have to look Jaws is 75. And Star Wars is 75. Oh, well, there well, you go. Yeah, yeah, or 77. I think it was. I it doesn't matter. Actually, yeah, it's right around anyway, the same time, yeah. Yeah, but apparently they both went on, they, they met each other around that time. Yeah. And George Lucas wanted Steven Spielberg to direct uh, Return of the Jedi, but because George Lucas had a falling out with the Directors Guild of America, they were not going to let Steven Spielberg direct Return of the Jedi. And this is all because George Lucas messed with the leading credits at the beginning of the movie with A New Hope. Uh, because he didn't want credits at the beginning of the movie. He yeah. wanted it to be like prologue movie and director's oh, and, of America. And, which is a which is a great idea. Yeah, absolutely, it works really well. Uh, like musically, it's it's shitty because like just because my background is music. Like having an overture is what you used to do, and they used to do that in movies. That's why you had the credits at the beginning because you'd have an overture introducing all the themes of a movie. Um, it's a oh, holdover yeah, yeah. from opera, and, mm-hmm. and 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 but then when you do when you don't do that, when you just sort of go like like Lucas Arts. You know what I mean? Credits are rolling, right? So, yeah. that and that's I think it's great that you do that. I think the pacing of the movie benefits extremely mm. well. Absolutely, I would agree. Yeah. Um, but back to Temple of Doom. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, on a whole, I I just felt it was just a flat movie. There was really nothing. There's no narrative. Yeah, there is no narrative. It was essentially, like you said, a lot of really really interesting looking set pieces. It looked good. Um, but there was a lot of loose threads that didn't connect or line up, and it feels like they the were characters just like, weren't even like the characters uh, weren't even fleshed out or developed. And it, it, it honestly just feels like they're they were trying to come up with a horrible, like some sort of semblance of plot just to move these awesome set pieces through. Because you're right, the set pieces are wicked. That minecart scene is ripped straight out of Donkey Kong, and it's awesome. <laughs> right. Like you know what I'm talking about? Like yeah. it's so sick. Um, like that's what I imagine. Like when I play Donkey Kong, and there's those like cart sequences. Oh, that's what I yes. imagine. That. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. That's now. exactly. Are you talking about like N64 Donkey Kong. Well, or... yeah, but also Donkey Kong Country. But any Donkey oh, Kong okay, game. Yeah, right. that's exactly what I imagine those cart sequences being like, but in live action 3D. Right. Um, now I've got a couple thoughts about this. Did you know that Temple of Doom is actually a prequel to Raiders of the Lost Ark? 
I did not. Know yeah, that. so it Wait, is. It, well, how? Raiders takes place in 1936 or 37. Okay. Uh, maybe even 38. I think it might be 1938. Okay. And uh, Temple of Doom takes place in 1935. Huh. So it's. It is it is a prequel. I just wanted to if that skews you the way you look at the movie now. Uh, not really. Not really. I still think it's bad. <laughs> and then the next uh, thing that I wanted to bring up was: Were you aware that um, the whole opening shot okay. was because uh, um, Spielberg wanted to direct a James Bond movie? I was wondering. It had a very James Bondy feel to it. Well, even when Harrison Ford shows up and he's like wearing that t- white top tux. Yeah. It, you're like that's totally supposed to be Sean Connery. Yeah, it, yeah. Well, it feels more like a James Bond movie than a like an archaeologist yeah. movie. Yeah. And and later on, because we see him wearing that tux. Later on, when they're in the palace of uh, whatever the place that is, um, we see that we see him in sort of his tweed suit from the first movie. And you're like, that's Indy. This tuxedo thing that he's wearing, Indy, I feel like wouldn't wear that. He'd either wear his like hat and coat kind of thing. Or he'd wear that like tweed suit bow tie thing <laughs> yeah. that we see in Ark and in Doom, because mm. it's also his dad's style. Like if you look in, in um, oh um, Last Crusade, in Last Crusade, his dad wears like a very similar style to uptight Indy, as right. opposed to like in the field as work. Indy. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Junior. Junior. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so that brings us right into. I'm just gonna do a quick summary, and then we'll move into the pitch. All right. All right. So here's our summary for those of you who haven't seen Temple of Doom in a while, to which I would say, don't bother. Uh, (laughs) So in Shanghai, Indiana Jones winds up in a shady deal for a diamond with a shady Chinese businessman. The deal winds up going wrong for Indiana, who is then forced to give up the diamond and flee with a female singer named Willie Scott. Meeting up with Indy's associate, Short Round, the three then board a plane, but it turns out to be owned by the shady businessman. The pilots then intentionally crash the plane. The three manage to escape on an inflatable raft, and now on the ground they enter a village where they're told that an ancient stone has been stolen along with some children from the village. So they head to a place called Pangot Palace, and there they discover that a cult has been using the children to mine for the remaining stones that seem to be buried underground. Indy attempts to see what's going on, but is captured and somehow brainwashed. In this state, he winds up capturing Willie somehow, and then she is lowered into a pit of lava. But he wakes up and saves her. Then a battle ensues between the members uh, and main characters, the cult members and the main characters. And eventually they find themselves in a mine cart to ride out of the mine safely. And when they do, they are wind up cornered by the cultists on a rope bridge. And in a desperate route move, Indy cuts the bridge. And the three then fight the cultists as they work their way up the bridge, which is now a ladder, basically. And finally, they reach the top victorious. And with the village leaders... Uh, and now with the villagers protected and the stone is now safe and sound. So end of movie. Roll yeah, credits. you'll notice like that was a hard one for me to get through in terms of the summary because it's just sort of it's so disconnected. Even listening just, to you describe it, this it's you'd go away. Is this the same movie? You're it's, just sort of jumping like as you said, we're just kind of drifting through the yeah. narrative. Yeah. Like I almost feel like this should be Indiana Jones on the search for the plot. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a better movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think I went first last time. Did you? Do you want to go first? Sure. Yeah, why don't okay. you go first? All right. Um, so there are... I'll go with like more general changes. So first, right off the top, I would get rid of the whole opening in Shanghai because it has nothing to do with the rest of the movie. Yeah, no. It's just, I mean... It's so James Bond, and it's it really is. cool, it is but actually, it has nothing to do well, with the plot. It was interesting. When I was talking about Steven Spielberg leading your eye, like the bit, the business around the table where they're exchanging the diamond. The camera work there is actually pretty interesting. That's such a, that's such a sick scene, like yeah. moving it on the lazy Susan around. Oh, yeah, like so it's, a, it's a well. You could tell that I feel the whole movie, in my opinion, exists for this scene, and I'm sure that Steven <laughs> Spielberg is like, I just want to do a James Bond movie. This is how I. This is my calling card for a James Bond movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. and maybe that's why he didn't get to do a James Bond movie <laughs> because this movie sucks yeah. <laughs> that scene is really well done actually I did want to talk just quickly sorry sure. there's a scene in there where we're, we see the camera and it's like from I think it's from Indy's perspective and a, just a fist comes out of the camera and punches someone and so it's like first person but all you just see is this fist come oh, out of the yeah. camera and hit someone it, I was like that's kind of jarring but it's also hilariously well right. shot right. it's just like I'm, I am this fist hitting this guy. I thought it was great. Anyway, I don't on. remember that. Oh, that's great. Anyway, 
I would just take that whole scene out because it really has not. It only exists to give this very convoluted explanation for why we're in India all of a sudden. Um, yeah, really. And, and it never, it's never brought back this whole, oh, we found the ashes of the first Chinese emperor from this certain dynasty. It doesn't come back. The diamond doesn't come back. None of it comes back. It's, we just jump off a life raft, land on a mountain, slide down the mountain, and now we're in India. Because. Uh, because. Because we were trying to find the plot. And here we are. Um, so that would be my first change. Um, I would also, I would get rid of the love interest. Um, what, Willie was her name. Willie Scott. Willie Scott, yeah. Um, I think the movie would be better without her. God, she is a, so annoying. Yeah. Even though, like, I mean, Short Round is, like, racist. It, yes. Like, he is ra- he's a racist stereotype, but at least he's entertaining. And at least he contributes. And, cause, and, I th- and one of the things I thought about was, could you have her in the story still and, and she just be more of an agent in the story? But I and thought, they not suck. I pers- yeah, I'm sure that's possible, but I just felt like it's... Yeah, I think it would be adding too much. I, I personally think it would be more interesting if the focus of the film was the relationship between Indiana Jones and Shorty, actually. And how Shorty sees Indiana Jones, so that would actually be how I would focus the film and make it more of like a character film. Um, the other thing that I feel like we need to address is the racism that's really inherent in, in the, the movie. movie. Like not just short round, but you're talking about like the, the way whole, like, he oh, treats like, Indian, Indian culture. Yeah. And, like, oh, he eats live snakes or live eels outside of a cooked snake. Exactly. And like we just eat bugs and like all the Indian men we come across are either evil or uh, hypnotized or disgusting. Right. And they're all bad guys yeah. and who need to be rescued by the British military. So this would actually be another thing that I was going to change. I was going to make the villains, actually, the people running the, the slave mine would actually be the British. Oh, man. Okay. I don't want to give it away. Uh, <laughs> you're probably going to be thinking the same thing, too. I don't want to give it away, yeah. But my, my whole thinking was it would be a lot more interesting if Indiana discovers that these children are there looking for this these stones that the British want. But because what, one of the things that's at the heart, or you've seen all the other Indiana Jones movies, is he's against some sort of authoritarian, authoritative regime. Yeah. So in the first one, it's the Nazis. In the third one, it's the Nazis again. Yeah. In the fourth one, one it's, it's the Russians. The Russians and Cold War <laughs> Russia. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. I, and this would be I really don't give anything away. if it was the British Empire. Right. I don't want to give anything away, but I did something incredibly similar. Okay. So I think that would be a much more interesting movie, because then you can talk about colonialism. And we're in India, where this is a country that has experienced... A lot of problems and, and as a, a result horrible of it. oppression. Oh yeah, especially during 1935. Like this is pre Gandhi India. Exactly. So, yeah. so it would have been actually very fitting to make yeah. the British Empire. And so that guy who shows up in the hotel at the beginning, um, who the, they meet, the British general. Oh, meets, like Captain. Yeah. Foot or whatever. Yeah, who doesn't really. <laughs> he's he kind of there. Kind of and then, he's just like, oh, I need a plot device for Deus Ex Machina. Yeah, exactly. But he, I think he should have been the, actually the the villain by the end of it. Um, and, uh, let's see, what else did I have here? Um, so, in terms of, like, a, a character story, in terms of Indiana Jones' motivations, my thinking was, well, one of the things I have to admit about Indiana Jones, I find the violence actually very troubling. I actually, I re- watched Raiders of the Lost Ark again a couple years ago, and I found the, I did find the violence in it bothersome, and I find the violence in this bothersome. What bothers me about it is basically the way he solves all his problems is just by beating people up. Yeah. And if you think about it, he's actually not a very responsible archaeologist. Ew. So he's bad. Like I mean, there's been lots of essays and and pop culture edits about this, but he's not not good at his job. And a lot of people say he's not even a good person. No, he's not. And so I would make that essentially the at the root of this film where you would give a shorty I would give him a different name too but um, you would give him opportunities to question the integrity of Indiana Jones and my thinking was Indiana Jones shows up because he's on uh, academic probation or he's he's in trouble of some kind and he's got to get his status back he's going through this village finds out about this stone and on the surface says that he's going to help them to get their children back but really, he because in the film, what's interesting is he says openly, oh, I'm in it for the fame and glory, which is kind of a weird thing to admit. But I thought it'd be more interesting if he's, that's, it, that is actually his motivation, but he doesn't say it. Mm. He pretends to have more altruistic 
intentions. And then going on this expedition, Shorty is now watching him and going, wait a second, you're now, uh, you, you say you're doing this, but now I'm starting to question that. And so um, I had an idea for, uh, at one point, I thought maybe you could have Indiana Jones have a choice. Like he gets the stone and he's like, I can go. I've got this artifact. I can get out of here. But in order to get out of there, he'd have to, like, Shorty gets caught. And so he has a choice between, okay, I can get out of here with this, or I can go back and rescue Shorty. And he actually goes with the stone. Oh, shit. Instead. And in trying to escape, gets caught. Then he gets in prison, and Shorty escapes, but Shorty goes back and rescues him. And then they both escape, and then uh, Indiana Jones... And then through, you know, some other circumstance, they get the stone back, but at the end they both would part ways... So you that's just, interesting. Where like it, like short round would be, like oh you're not a good role model, and then maybe we have because this is a prequel, right? Then maybe we have Indigo like maybe I need to rethink how I do this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. that would be that would be how I would mm. approach it. Where yeah. he starts off selfish, and by the end realizes oh my irresponsibility. There's consequences to yeah. it. And you mirror that with the British Empire and the oh. sky. Because the, the villain is someone who's willing to use children to meet his ends. And Indiana Jones does the exact same, same thing. thing. And so it'd be really interesting if at a certain point in the film, Indiana Jones, like, that's what gets him in trouble. And then by the end, he decides, okay, no, I can't do this. This yeah. is wrong. And that's where he veers oh, off in a different direction. Yeah. You focused hugely on thematics. I went way narrative with mine. Like, I rewrote the film to work like some kind of semblance of a narrative in there. Okay. But I, I didn't really focus too much on, on thematics. Okay, well, let's hear yours. That's essentially, yeah, is that essentially, that's, that's oh, essentially that's, the big talking yeah. points for mine. I'd like to hear it. Okay, so mine is like very narrative driven. I was so frustrated with the lack of story in this movie that I was like, I am rewriting the, the shit out of this because it's just so frustrating. But I didn't do much in the way of themes, but I think I have a, an excellent story using a lot of the same set pieces. So if you're ready, you ready? Feel free Go to ask it. questions when All you're right. ready. So, so the whole beginning, that whole shot, like the James Bond thing, instead of taking place in Shanghai, is going to take place in India. Except instead of a, a shady um, Chinese man, it's going to be a shady British dude in, in India. Much better yeah, already. Much better already. So shady British dude in India. Um, so Willie is no longer a white woman, but actually an Indian singer in an Indian restaurant. And uh, she has some agency and doesn't suck. And I've decided I'm going to rename her Wakita, right? Which is Indian for beautiful flower. I just Googled the name. But it starts with a W, so, <laughs> so Wakita. Um, so I'm actually, if you recall in that scene, there's actually a character in there named Wu Han who gets shot in the opening scene. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have him not die and replace Short Round. Oh, okay. So he can still be the sort of kind of funny comedic guy, but not in a racist way, and have way more agency, because he's a little more on the level. He's not as old as, as Indy, or as Wakita, so he's, he's young, you may be like early teens, or sorry, early 20s, late teens, but he's, you know, he's there, he has some agency. And so those are our three main characters now, no more short round, all right? So the intro still works out exactly the same way, um, but when they finally board the plane, it's not owned by the shady businessman. And then Indy explains that the whole, like, trying to get the diamond was actually a diversion, right? So that whole opening thing was, like, him trying to get the diamond, and then, um, you know, all this time he's trying, ah, I need to get the diamond, I need to get the diamond. Um, they do the trade, like, all that great camera work we were talking about. But really, he was never after the diamond. He was just using the trade as a diversion, and he pulls out a piece of paper from an old book. And then he explains the legend of... Uh, the five uh, Shankara stones and how they were given to Shankara by Shiva to help him go forth and expel evil, which, by the way, is actually truth. Um, that's in some Hindu religion. Oh, okay, so you're but pulling on Yeah, actual, I'm trying to pull on, like, the, uh, much the way that we did in, in Raiders of the Lost Ark, like, actual sort of... Um, the mythology. Yeah, the mythos exists. of Christian... Yeah. yeah. And so this time we're going with... Instead of like, making Hindu, it up and pulling right. it out of thin air and coming up with this god that yeah. wants you to rip people's hearts, hearts out of their yeah. chest. So I, what I've done is now we have um, uh, this... this uh, we're pulling on the Hindu mythos. And so uh, he wants to find these stones. And so apparently these stones are said to have magical abilities. And this piece of paper from an ancient book is 
uh, has details the information about where one of these stones, legendary stones, might actually exist. So when they get on the plane, the plane then lands um, in this Indian village where the stone is said to be. This We're in the middle of nowhere, like backwoods India. Nobody's going to go there. But Indy's like, we have to do this now. He's like, I'm sorry, uh, Wakita. We have to do this now. I can't drop you off anywhere because if the shady British dude finds out that this page of the book is missing, then he's going to start looking for it. He's going to know something's up. So they show up um, in this Indian village. The villagers uh, tell Indy that he's not the first person to ask about the stone lately. There's been others asking about the stone, and specifically Westerners asking about the stone. Some of the British overlords, um, as it were. Um, so they tell him that the stone is actually kept in a forbidden temple. The villagers do not go there because it's a holy place. So it's this forbidden temple where the stone is kept, and as long as it's there, they get a blessing. The, the, they will be looked after as long as the stone is there. Although none of them go to the temple, so they don't actually know if the stone is there. But lately, since people have been asking about the stone, there's been um, sickness in the village, and crops have started dying. Now, Indy just sort of chalks this up. He's just like, it's just superstition, in his, like, low it's, Harrison Ford yeah. voice. Yeah, he's just like, that's superstition, no worries. Like, But what he can't explain away is the fact that some of the villagers have started going missing. Not just children, just villagers in general have started going missing. Can't explain that. So um, he thinks, and the villagers have said, there have been sightings of people near the holy temple, right? Um, but, you know, okay, so Indy's like, all right, I guess we'll have to go check out um, what's going on here. And I just want to point out, this whole conversation happens in Hindi. None of it's in English. Oh, okay. So because Indy is cool enough that he he's Doctor Jones, he's good enough that he has a somewhat grasp on Hindi Hindi as a language, and what he doesn't do well with, we have Wakita to help him. So she has some agency. Oh, okay. She's not just there. So, but like I feel like why would these people in the middle of nowhere, India, speak English? You know what I mean? Right. So it all takes place in Hindi. Dr. Jones, I'm calling him Dr. Jones now because he's being professorly, okay. has his, has a, he has enough grasp to, have to, I mean, he's been looking for these stones specifically. Right, so, so he studied it. He studied it, so he has a little bit of, of Hindi, enough to get by, but when they get into the hardcore stuff, Wakita helps out, right? And then Wu Han is like, I don't speak English, because he's still Chinese, right? I'm okay with that. Yes. Yeah. Right? So then we have that going on. But I just feel like that really ticks me off when, when, West, when non-Westerners speak English and you're like, why? You don't have to. Like, like, some, like when just go to the editing room and spring for some subtitles. Like, mm, that one ticks me off. That's a pet peeve of mine. Okay. So then they finally go to the, the temple um, and they can have the whole, like, see the blood statue and they're like, don't go here, don't go here. So in the temple, it's filled with a group of people who worship Yama. Yama is the Hindu god of the underworld. Now, it's not like the Christian underworld, like hell. So one soul can actually go back and forth between the living world and he heaven, quote-unquote, and hell, quote-unquote. Um, but what, what, what they do is they have a skewed version of it where when you go to the underworld in Hinduism, you, um, you get cleansed of evil usually through pain. Oh, it's more, it's more of like a purgatory almost? Yeah, it's okay. like, yeah, you get cleansed of evil almost through pain, and they believe that that somehow this, our world now, has become, um, like, evil, or has become the underworld, and they're here to help, like, they've been torturing these vill missing villagers to try and cleanse them of their own evil, and they think that the stone, they're not from the temple, but they've invaded the temple because they think the stone will give them more ability to... Uh, cleanse the world of evil um, and cleanse the people of their evil um, but they can't get through the traps in the temple and so Indy and Wakita and Wuhan get caught and they're like we will cleanse you of evil and they send them into the traps in the temple but the three of them being super clever manage to outsmart the traps much the way Indy does in, um, in Last Crusade, in Last Crusade. Right. like he's smart enough uh, but we also see, like, Wuhan is very resourceful, you know what I mean? Right. And also, Wakita knows a lot about Hinduism, because she's Hindu, right? Right. So, we see the three of them working their smarts together, plus Indy's, you know, natural ingenuity, 
to like actually instead of just luckily getting out or bugs ah, i don't want to help you instead it's like oh no we can use our brains get out they finally get to the room where they see the stone and they see the stone and it's there and then all of a sudden the floor erupts and it turns out that the shady british gentleman from the beginning of the film has been tunneling underneath the temple to subvert the traps and oh. get into it so he just walks in through this exploded tunnel grabs the thing and leaves through his tunnel and the cultists are like what the heck like so they <laughs> show up and they the yeah and now all of a sudden indy and his crew um Wakita and wuhan and the cultists are all chasing after this uh um this shady british gentleman um uh, and we get the mine card scene because that's still a, such a good yeah. scene it's it could be a little long but uh, it's great so we get that you know three-way chasing at the end of the mine card scene we can get a three-way fight where finally the cult leader winds up getting the stone but the British dude says, if I don't get that stone, I've rigged the tunnel we've created to blow up. The temple up top will collapse on top of us, killing everyone if I don't get that stone. And the cultist is like, I don't need your help. I can just like command the stone to do my bidding. So he starts speaking in Hindu. But instead of doing anything, the stone like obliterates him and his followers. Like they just like, now you're dust. Uh, okay. You know what I mean? And But the ensuing light that emanates that turns them into to dust like just this big like mm. light comes out also sets off the explosives in the tunnel and so now this tunnel's collapsing and uh the british dude uh flees and then indy and uh, his crew have to like run out of this collapsing tunnel it could be like the temple falling in great scene you know what i mean like i just think that would be like such an such an awesome action right. scene it's kind of reminiscent of the boulder Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like so the, the tunnel breakers. instead of like instead of all the, the whole tunnel like just boom collapsing, it's like the explosions are happening like, like sequence, yeah, yeah, in like a chain reaction. So they're like running out and as soon as they leave that room, that collapses behind them and collapses behind them. So we get this like reminiscent of the the boulder in Raiders of the Lost Ark, but now it's like this whole temple and tunnel collapsing out. Finally, um uh finally they make it out of the tunnel, but the British dude got away. Uh, he got away, right? So, no such luck. So, um, but it turns out that the, all the mining, all the tunneling that they've been causing to build the tunnel into the temple was contaminating the water, which was causing the the sickness uh, from drinking water and the crops to die, right? Um, and then, so finally, uh, Indiana, Wakita, and Wuhan go to leave after putting this, like giving the stone to the people, and Wuhan could say something like, hey, man, it was really, really great that you left the stone behind, right? And, like, he's like, but I, I don't understand why you left it. Like, like think about the greatness of what that stone could, could mean for the world. And Indy turns to Wuhan and goes, what stone? Uh, and that sort of signifies, like, the stone means more to those people there and means more good for them than it would ever do in the real world. Right. You know what I mean? Because of the power to obliterate or whatever. So he's just like, what stone? Right. And that's the end of the movie. Cool. Yeah, so I like it. Yeah. I focus much more on like what? narrative rather than an actual uh, overall, I guess, theme. But like thematically, the idea, what I really wanted is like, I don't know, like it's just it's, a, it's like a fun, it's a fun adventure. It's a fun adventure, yeah. and I tried to to take what was there and really change it around a bit more. I wanted to give Wakita more agency, because uh, Willie is such a frustrating character. Yeah. Oh my God, Indy. Yeah. I wet. I hate the outside. <laughs> like it's like I'm gonna pour a cologne on this uh, elephant. And then the stinky Indian dude. Yeah. And so I really wanted to give like because if it's gonna take place in India, I wanted to give India a voice. The, mm -hmm. the Indians a voice. So that's why I wanted Wakita there. She speaks Hindi, right? She speaks, um, or she knows about Hindu culture. And yeah, sure, she can be easy on the eyes. Like it's fine if you want to have her be a beautiful woman, especially if she's a singer. But let's not not have a love plot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not necessary. I agree. Right? Yeah. And then I also think, like, having Wu Han, who might be great, like, we could sort of uh, show him as being, like, he's great in the city. When they're escaping through the city, he knows all the ins and outs. He's a great driver. Like, he's very metropolitan. You know what I mean? Right. But as soon as they're out in the jungle, he, he can be useless. It's just like, ah, I don't like, you know what I mean? I don't like jungles. Like, I'm a, right. I'm a city kind of guy. So then we have, like, Indy, who's in his element as long as he's in the field, you know uh -huh. what I mean? But also very smart against um, Wakita, who is this, like, singer, but still very smart and capable, or at least, like, you know, 
street smart. Mm -hmm. And then we have Wuhan, who's like, you know, he's like almost um, a Chinese gangster. You know what I mean? Like very used to being the city, knows his way around a gun, like grew up on the streets, um, works with Indy because, you know, um, maybe Indy got him out of a tight jam one time. So, so Wuhan's a little bit of a shady character, but he's loyal to Indy no matter what, right? right. But he sucks in a jungle. He's all about metropolitan life, right? right? So then we can have him sort of be the butt of being in the jungle. But still, like, he's doing his best. He's just not a jungle guy. Yeah, exactly. Right? And then Wakita can be our female, but doesn't need to be a love plot. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like this the love plot is actually super sexist, super misogynistic, and uh, really pulls away from whatever semblance of a plot is in this movie. Yeah. So. Yeah, I agree. I don't know. It just. <laughs> I I agree because I was when I was sitting down to figure out what to do with it. I uh, I tried to, um, I tried to keep within the confines of what had already been done. But it's hard because it's a really deeply flawed film in terms of the fact that you really have no direction as to where it's going. And the, um, in terms of the motivations for the characters, like there really isn't any apart yeah. from we're at some point, it's like 20 minutes in the movie. He goes, Oh, I got to find this thing for fame and glory. Yeah. For fame and glory, but it falls into his lap. The plot yeah. falls. Well, he falls into its lap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. crash. But like even, even the, the shaman at the, uh, in the village is like, no, Shiva sent you. You fell from the sky because Shiva sent you. And it's like, that feels too deus ex. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Which is indicative of the whole plot. Because later on we have the British military guy show up. And he that's so deus ex machina. It he is. Just, yeah. He just shows up. And and, and oh. that's that's that. Yeah. yeah. I, feel like, I feel like we could merge our... Yeah, I'd like to have. Stories. I'd like to have more theme. Well, I did notice is that I do tend to, to focus on theming a lot when it's there. Like I'll be like, this is the big central theme, but I, I couldn't do that because there's not really a theme in this one. The only thing that I really came up with was uh, I wanted the female character Willie or Wakita, whatever you want to call her, to have more agency mm. to be a character in her own right, and I wanted there to be an overarching plot. So I brought like. Like, I also wanted the the scene at the beginning, that, that Shanghai scene, to really have more oomph. It needs to matter in the plot. So that's why I had it, like, why not introduce the villain there, the British guy? Yeah, yeah. Um, but also have, like, the cultists can still be a thing, but not necessarily the bad guys. They're just a different worldview. Mm -hmm. maybe, yeah, and they're not... a good one. But... They're not trying to... And it's also weird in Temple of Doom. It's like, our God's gonna take over the world and yeah they're not trying to take over the world they're literally just they believe that that they are cleansing the world of evil through physical suffering it's right. not good right it's not good people but they're not even really the villains it's i just needed the cult really to be in there because that was what is in the original movie <laughs> right. yeah 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 the other thing i really wanted to drive home again was passive heroism which is the again the idea that a character moves through a narrative as opposed to affecting the narrative okay so by that what i mean is like um if you take uh well i mean the fact that the plot indy isn't going out to get the plot it just falls in his lap you know what i mean if in we the, in the current film in the current yeah. film yeah. yeah the plot just falls in his lap so i wanted the whole opening scene because it's such an amazing shot to be like oh he's always after this diamond but then we see him like like maybe steal a book at one point right like during all the chaos he like finds a book steals it and he, and then at the end we sort of when they get into the plane he's like smiling and wikita's like oh you think you're so clever and wuhan's like did you get it did you get it and he's like no she's like no you didn't get the diamond right and he's like lady it was never about the diamond and he pulls out this piece of paper right, yeah. and she's like well what's that and wuhan's like dr jones did you did you find the, the piece of paper? And he like opens it up and he's like, this is it. This is going to tell us supposedly the location of one of the five stones of Shankara. And that's much more interesting because you're even misdirecting an audience too with that because you're basically building it up to being about, about a certain object and then revealing that it's something else so that if you go back and watch it again you can see you're like, paying attention for what would have been yeah, what was actually after that. Actually, time. I kind of got the inspiration from... Um, from um, Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, okay. Like, I kind of, I, I th when I saw the James Bond thing, I was like, this is a really cool scene, but I almost wanted it to be more Pirates of the Caribbean, where what was going on on screen didn't reveal the motivations necessarily of what every character was up to. So if you go, if you, what I wanted is if you go back and watch it, you can see, like, Indy's always, 
focusing on the diamond and the trading of of the the ashes of the first emperor emperor of the manchu dynasty but what's really going on is indy's using all this as a distraction to get his hands on the book about the the stone of shankara yeah that's yeah. much more interesting yeah. yeah where i was going with mine was i was um i was thinking about skyfall i was like, okay, I was yeah, like yeah. what was a, a sequel where because with a lot of these movies um and, and going back to james bond even the leading character is usually a bit more stoic and you usually it's very rare that you actually get to see more of what's lying underneath yeah what i liked about skyfall was you've got a little bit more of an insight into who this james bond is and i was sort of thinking what would that be like with with an indiana jones sequel my my actually one of the other things i thought would be interesting is to answer the question why is he afraid of snakes is that, that is they that they ever explain explained? that yeah they, they do explain it in last crusade do they or they talk about how um his dad is afraid of rats mm, okay. but i believe it's explained and there was like a, a short series of movies and or tv show called young indiana jones that's right yeah okay. i've never seen it I haven't, uh, I haven't heard whether it's good or not but it sort of explains like the fear of the, snakes. His, how he got his fear of snakes because he didn't used to always be afraid and and uh, like I do actually have eventually I'd like to do an episode of Cinemasters on what an Indiana Jones five might look like. Oh, OK. Um, so once we do Crystal Skull, I'd like to maybe be like, hey, let's pitch let's Indiana do Jones five. Because I have some five. great ideas about how I'd like to do that. And okay. also how I'd like to introduce a new Indiana Jones. So I won't uh, go into too much detail now, but Harrison it Ford, it's not Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> I do not, oh, anyway, that's getting off topic into, we'll talk about Crystal Skull eventually. Right. But uh, uh, yeah, eventually I would like to be like, hey, Indiana Jones 5, what would that look like? Oh, that'd be fun. But yeah, so no, what I was, I, I really like the idea of Skyfall, like being like, like, hey, let's go into this. We don't know much about Indy's backstory. Mm. Um, but also questioning his integrity, is mm. it? Because the thing that bugs me, as I said, is he's the hero, and I'm like, that's that guy's an asshole. Yeah, well, I, that's why that's why I kind of wanted to go with this whole the Pirates of the Caribbean thing, where um, it's almost like Rick and Morty, where the main character is Rick, or the main character is kind of um, Jack Sparrow, but they're not good guys. No. You're rooting for them, but they're not good guys. And I also wanted to show, like, even though Indy is an action hero. And like punch, kick, punch, punch, kapow, whip, whoosh, right? I also wanted him to be much more um, clever. Mm -hmm. You know, when they get stuck in the traps, the traps aren't just all physical things. It's it's much more like, how do I get through to the other side or through right. this room using the wit or... or um... Kind of like in Last Crusade where he's Last, got a sink. Yeah. Yeah. Last yeah. Crusade, I think, is a bit more like about the knowledge you have. Oh, I see. You know what I mean? Where it's like... Um, which is fine. Like we can have one or two traps that are like that. Right, but this would be more puzzle solving. Yeah, I want it to be a little bit more like. Whereas, like, like then we can show off how Wuhan, even though he is, uh, um, you know, even though he's really, really out of out of his element in the jungle, you can see he's sharp. He's fast. He's like, oh, you know, we need to solve this falling ceiling problem. But you know, this reminds me of that one time where I don't know, whatever. You know what I mean? We can show that he's he's quick thinking, even though he's sort of been our comedic relief up to this point. He's still sharp. He's fast. He's it, like he's got a certain amount of ingenuity. Whereas Wakita can help out with the lore side of the puzzle, oh, more okay. like uh, and then, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we just have sure. Indy being the coolest guy ever. I just want him to be a little more smart and clever rather than uh, just and just kind of this brute who just punches his way through things. through things. Yeah. yeah. Which is what which is what bugs me about Indiana Jones in general. Because I really like Last Crusade. I think Last Crusade is my favorite. Um, and I actually, but I, another sorry, another thing I wanted to do with this one was, and I apologize if I'm being because I'm a white dude. If if uh, I did some appropriation. Oh okay, what would, yeah. But I I really feel like if you maybe wanted to get somebody who understands more about Hinduism in and my pitch was just rough, right? It was just like here are yeah. my thoughts. Both of our pitches are rough. Yeah. yeah. Like if if I could get somebody who understands about like like Hindu culture and Hindu religion and bring them in and be like, "Hey, instead of me telling this story, why not bring in like tell us more about oh, the yeah. actual story of cuz I I mean my research was totally not deep. Tell us more about the lore of Absolutely. of the Shankara stones and how Shiva gave these stones to this guy named Shankara who went to the top of this hill because apparently that's all based on um, like mythology, like Hindu mythology. And and I feel like Indiana Jones needs to play with that mm -hmm. in order to because in order to go from our world uh, where things 
the, there are miraculous things per se in order to keep it grounded in the real we need some kind of mythos and we already did christianity so why not do do hinduism, do hinduism. Yeah, do or or what um this might be uh going into somebody else's wheelhouse potentially but what about going into like greek mythology oh, yeah. like looking for like what if what if there was like um um, actually, this goes into what I think my idea for uh, Indiana Jones 5 will be, but so I won't say too much. But what about like they, if they're looking for um, something from, yeah, like Greek mythology, like, uh, I don't know, there's lots of great right. examples. Or Norse mythology. Yeah, or Norse looking mythology. Looking for that hammer of Thor. Yeah, the hammer of Thor. It might be too much of a giveaway. <laughs> but like, um, so what if, uh, what if they're looking for this thing called uh, um, Telos, right? So Telos was supposedly this um, moving um, being that was made of earth or uh, metal. Okay. It was made by Hephaestus. Like, what if that was something they were looking for? Um, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. But just kind of, like, this guy, I have an idea. But the whole idea is grounding it in grounding it the in, actual in, mytho yeah, mythology. Yeah, the pre-existing mythology that people would be familiar that with. That people would, yeah. So you could just be like, you know, if I say, like, like, you know, especially with, uh, less so with Raiders of the Lost Ark, but especially when you say, like, the Holy Grail. Everybody knows about the Holy Grail. Everybody knows, like, that's pretty locked down in mythos, right? The cup that Jesus drank from at the Last Supper, right? Now, it's always been sort of this mythological thing, because I don't think there's actually any reference to it in the Bible at all. <laughs> no, not at all. But it's always sort of been there. And I think, like I said before, Indiana Jones always does its best when it's grounded in this world in between. It's still real world, and, but the magic is just there. Like, just sprinkle Yeah, on. exactly. It's yeah. not... Uh, not overt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's more subtle. Yeah. yeah. And I would also, just to add to your point about the dangers of cultural appropriation, we would both advocate for if, if we were if we were in some hypothetical alternate reality hired to rewrite Temple of Doom, we would want to bring in writers and other key creatives who could actually address that. Yeah, like that would be, like, I'm straight up saying it now. I want to have more Hindu culture in this film so it's not racist. And the best way to do that is get someone who is... Indian who knows Hinduism, who is, yeah. but is also a good filmmaker, like yeah. is also a good writer, Absolutely. right? Because there are those people out there. There have to be, right? <laughs> yeah. It can't just be a bunch of white people in a room because then you get movies about white people in a room. That's how you end up whitewashing. Whitewashing, which is what this which film super suffers from. Basically, yeah. yes. This film is so it's incredibly racist in... Pro-colonial. Yeah, it's pro-colonialism. It is... Um, Sorry, Stephen. Yeah, it is pro-colonial. <laughs> it is sexist, racist, misogynistic. Like, every interaction we get between... I mean, the way Indy interacts with the, the native Hindus, or the native Indians, I should say, isn't um, isn't awful. Like, he's always pretty respectful. He shows, he shows respect for, the, like, when they're feeding him. And yeah, yeah. He always, he always seems to be pretty respectful. He seems to have some sensitivity. Yeah. Um, but the way they like treat it like, oh, dessert is chilled monkey brains. Like, like, I don't know if Indians eat monkey or not, but like, does it have to be disgusting? You <laughs> right. know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, I don't know. I'd try it, but I also don't know if that's a thing. You know what I mean? Like, do I'm some, pretty some sure Indian, it's not. <laughs> some Indian cultures eat monkey. I don't know. I'm straight up saying, I don't, I don't know. know Let's yeah. not make that assumption. Spielberg. Right. Exactly. Right? Like that, uh, that movie suffers a lot from that. So it's mm -hmm. it's almost like instead of having a plot, they just tried to make up for it with with gags in between. You know what I mean? Like it's just a bunch of Willie screaming about how. And then with the, when the thing that really bothers me is is if you can choke down the 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 racist racism with short round and and the way they treat the Indians in the film in terms of agency, um, the misogyny between Willie and Indy is so gross yeah it is like you almost have to remove her character completely to address it yeah because every scene is it basically plays where she hates him she loves him she hates him she loves him and it's so f infuriating and the way he plays like because because she doesn't have any agency really the way she plays with him is is he's always just like you're super annoying but you're a woman and i want that it's like <laughs> really indy like that's what that's what her point of being in the movie is put her in a pretty dress and and, and have at it and the then only thing she does is rescue them from the crushing room yeah and but that's basically and even that was an accident but even that was so <laughs> so 
aggravating because that scene actually shows her doing something useful, like her going out of her way to save Indy in short round, but the only reason she can't do it is because bugs. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're creepy. They're gross, creepy looking. Yeah. They're gross, right? But like, also the fact that the bugs that are in there are centipedes, cockroaches, and phasmids, right? None of which are particularly, uh, as far as I know, none of which are particularly like dangerous. No, they're not. They don't have stingers or pointers or or pincers that can man yeah. like mandibles I mean, that can. Bite it would still be someone. gross though, having centipedes crawling around. Right, but like centipedes are usually generally pretty actually tame. Right, yeah. it's why we see them in, in movies all the time. Same with cockroaches. Cockroaches are not gonna bite. Right, cockroaches are incredibly easy to deal with. That's why we see them in movies because <laughs> right. you get an immediate visceral gross reaction, right? But also, they're way too easy to just be like, they're deal with. You put a bunch of cockroaches down, and when you're done, you scoop them back up. <laughs> yeah. Right, they're pretty pretty easy to deal with. Yeah. Um, and phasmids are really cool. I don't know if you know a phasmid which is like one, a which stick one, which bug. One is it? The stick oh, bugs. The big... Yeah. Needles? No, no, they look like they look like sticks. Oh, yeah. There's a yes. couple of oh, those the stick in there. Bugs. The stick oh, bugs, they're yeah, called okay. phasmids. And uh those yeah, are pretty cool. They are super yeah. cool and they're super tame. They eat like leaves. They right. just they just hang out on trees they and try to pretty chill. Actually. They are super chill. Yeah. If I was an insect, I'd probably be a phasmid. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> if I was an insect, I would not be an insect. <laughs> um, but I yeah, so, so the, and then the only other one is centipedes. And centipedes are, if, if you're familiar, having centipedes in your house is a good thing because they eat other insects specifically, oh. like uh, other pest insects. So it's like, even though they're gross and creepy looking, like all of those bugs that we saw in there were... They're pretty benign. Yeah, they're pretty benign. And another thing they do, you, I mean, you have to chalk this up to the Foley artists and sound effects editing, but... Uh, insects don't make that like. Oh right, yeah. So on. insects but are usually some pretty quiet. Artistic license yeah, for sure. To In add to the gross yeah. factor. Insects are usually pretty quiet, and uh, well, to be like super clear, um, uh, centipedes aren't insects. They're still arthropods, but they're not technically insects. Oh, so I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Um, but yeah, so all all I mean by that is is like. Though, though they were gross, but like the whole reason she can't save them, the whole her big moment to have agency and save Indian short round is undercut because she's grossed out by bugs. They would be gross for sure. I'm not saying that I would want to jump headfirst into creepy crawly insects or stick my hand into a hole, but I think there are creepier ways to do that other than bugs. Like, yeah. what if she put her hand into the hole and something grabbed her, like so right. she couldn't get her hand out? Yeah, you know what I mean? Or like, what if? Uh, what if she reached her hand in and it's like, there's something in the way and she pulls it out and it's a human skull. Right. You know what I mean? Ooh. Then it would be like, ah, yeah. like, skull! And she like throws it away and then Indy could be like, well, hey! You know what I mean? <laughs> and like, yeah. But not but not playing up the whole fear around bugs. Fear around bugs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, that whole trope of her being afraid of everything was just... It gets old It, it was fast. also just annoying. I also, and I apologize to the actress, do not think she was a good actress. At least in that movie, maybe it's the way I she was written. Yeah, but it's I like all of her lines that she's in. All of her lines come across as super not into it. You know what I mean? She's just like, "You better have an explanation for this, Buster." Well, that's the other thing. I wonder how much of it was just on a script level. Like, think about it. You're given this. You're given this character, and you've got to figure out a way to make it believable. Yeah, I don't know enough about acting because I mean, you deal with actors more than I do. But like, I mean, it's all in the material. If you give, like, you're basically you're not doing the actor any good if you give them bad material. But like, as an as a when you're when you are an actor, um, do you get like, is there some kind of uh, method that people go through to get to? Depends. I mean, well, the other thing too is it depends on the demands of the production. Like, I have a feeling. Do you do this. research or sit down with the, yeah, the mean, director and be like, this is what I think about your character? Or? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, I, I have a feeling with this, they were going for something very. Blase. It is pulpy. Yeah, exactly. I, I feel like they were just going for something generic. They didn't put... I personally am of the opinion, in my humble opinion, they didn't put a lot of thought into how that was going to be approached. They were just like, hey, let's make a sequel. Okay, here's some money. Let's go make a sequel. Oh, that, it does, it does feel guess. like that. It yeah. does feel like that. And I know people rag on, on uh, Last Crusade, but I think The Last Crusade, like having his father in there, who's also like a super badass, like Indy... Indiana Jones and his father 
are both badasses. Mm -hmm. And but what but what's good about Last Crusade is you have already built into it. You have a motivation for Indiana Jones where he's trying to basically get the approval of his father, of his father. and that actually gives him some vulnerability, yeah. which is why I also think that's. But then the, the two the two film. plots sort of meld together where you have your first plot which is Indy's father's gone missing right yeah and the second plot which is Indy's father's gone missing while he was searching for the holy grail so now we have both Indy's looking for the holy grail in order to find his father while his father's looking for the holy grail and the two wind up coinciding right. and, and they see. find each other and they find each other well i mean it sounds super cheesy but like it it's works really, it's yeah, tight it's yeah. tight i mean it's not the best movie ever but it's not cinemaster's ultimate timeline worthy like i wouldn't re want to read i that think one. it's fine yeah, yeah. yeah it's fine too I, uh, we, won't, yeah. we don't need to touch it we don't need to visit the dimension where that's a different movie no no I think but we we'll, do for this one we definitely but i think we've uh we've uh i think we've at least i think we've done with this way one, yeah. At something talked about the main problems so i think it's time to leave this temple of doom dimension behind yeah and uh yeah so next week uh we're gonna look at i robot oh yeah i'm Nathaniel's so really excited about this so. i yeah. am very excited so next week we'll look at i robots so if you want to watch that one you can check us out and of course uh we'll uh we'll be back here you can check us out on facebook at cinemaster's ultimate timeline you want to pitch yourself on twitter again or... yeah it's either draper nate or nate draper you should it's... check that one i'm out. pretty sure it's nate draper yeah. but i could be wrong yeah and we'll check back with you next week on cinemaster's ultimate timeline all right see ya